All right, day two at the Sea Otter Classic. Uh, I'm going to hunt down the new bikes from Yeti and Giant, plus loads more. Five Dev has shown off their components on a pretty eclectic set of bikes and some very nice ones indeed. This is actually Chris, the owner's uh, bike, a specialised Epic, actually specced for gravel racing. Looks amazing. Deep dish carbon wheels, bar ends and showing off their brand new titanium cranks as well. So these are machine titanium hollowed out and then a plate welded on the back and then machined again. They have lab grown diamond covering on that titanium screw to basically separate the titanium from the aluminium, stop any corrosion. And they're available in 165 up to 175 lengths with two and a half mil increments. Five Dev known for their titanium parts, of course, that's their original titanium stem, but they're just introducing this aluminium version just under $150. Same technology, it's got this VRTS system. So as you'll see, if I slide this bar into it, you've got loads of space. You can actually fit like a, something like an 80 mil rise bar through that uh, stem front, and then it pinches down to 35 mil. You can also get a shim to run those 31.8 bars as well. And if you are obsessed with titanium like I am, you could also get some jockey wheels for your rear mech, titanium CNC'd uh, with ceramic enduro bearings for SRAM and Shimano. Some very cool old pro bikes here at Trek. Camacool's actually celebrating 20 years on Trek. There's some of his old bikes up there. And there's a brand new bike under that uh, cover he's gonna be presented with later on today. So we might check that out as well. But if you wanna check out some newer bikes, we have a couple of really cool bikes. Emil Johansson's Ticket S, slope style bike. Check this out. Uh, I wanna call it a gyro if you're a BMXer from the 90s or a detangler. So cable brake lever, obviously pulling these two things, basically lets you spin the bars as many times as possible, and this plate pulls that up to actuate the cable pull rear disc brake. Very cool bike. And behind that, we've got one of Brandon Seminick's Trek Sessions, custom painted, pretty cool. Over at Vittoria Tires, they've got some very cool pro bikes here, including White Van Art's Tour de France bike over there. But this is Ginia Lara Calori's bike. She is an under 23 cross country racer. And they're showing off just how successful some of their tires have been. But we've got some new ones here. We've got a Mezcal and a Peyote. The Peyote is a brand new tread design. Mezcal is an updated, but these are the XC race version. So We've seen the race tires on the Mazas in the past with that softer rubber, but this is the XC race construction. 60 TPI now, so actually a tougher uh, build than the older tires, but it now works in conjunction with that rubber. So rather than having maybe a super lightweight sidewall and then a stiffer rubber, now it all works to give you uh, more deformation, we talk about compliance a lot with bikes the last few years, but especially with tyres now, that all adds up to speed, grip and durability with these new XE race tyres. They come in 29 2.4, so quite a wide tyre for cross country racing. This is also very interesting at Vittoria. So this is a uh, recycled tyre basically. It's won an award at a Taipei bike show. It's made from natural rubber, this rice husk and this recycled nylon uh, yarn from fishnets. At the moment, it's just a gravel tire, but this is 92% renewable and recycled. We are in the PT stand, checking out some of their very cool products, some lovely colors going on. Especially love the 50 to one Rasta style on the tubeless valves. Uh, but they are showing off some very cool new products over here on the sand. They got some new grips, two different sets. You have the mushroom or the knurled, and they're both available in two different sizes. Uh, they've got an offset core, so actually there's more rubber on the top side of the grip where your hand pressure is, and less rubber on the bottom. Uh, soft compound, uh, these actually taper from 30 to 32 mil. These are the thin versions. On the thicker version, it's 32 up to 34. Uh, they've actually got these finger bars in the back. They're kind of recessed as well, where you need that less rubber for less comfort and the more rubber on the top. Uh, also, the core is actually made from 80% recycled plastic from the ocean. You can see some of the various iterations they went through. These are 3D printed, just push on grips to try the different shapes and sizes out. And if you're here at Sea Otter, come along so you can grab a set of bars and see if you prefer the feel of the thick or the thin, the mushroom or the knurled. I think we must be in the British end of Sea Otter because we've gone from PT straight next door to Hope Technology, taking a look at this lovely looking HB916 made by themselves, obviously covered in their components as well, brakes, bars, stem, cranks, pedals, and also their brand new tubeless valves. 
Over at Specialized, there is a very cool custom uh, Stump Jumper S-Works edition. It's actually very well used, but I still really like it, it's cool. Uh, Cherry Fox 36 up front with the Kashima looks amazing. Got some five dev cranks, the oval chain ring, polished linkages, some cool graphics on as well, shredding with 100% carelessness since 1985, it says on the chain stay. I like the style. Ritchie is a brand with so much heritage since 1972. In fact, name a mountain bike brand with more heritage. There isn't. Tom Ritchie was right there at the very start. They have some really cool bikes, some pretty eclectic uh, bikes on show actually, including this P29er. So it's available in two different builds. Obviously that's the gravel build with kind of uh, flared drop bars. And over here is the more XC build, as you'd imagine. One by 12, a uh, great looking hardtail bike. Yeti Bicycles, another brand with a lot of heritage. Uh, I've got a few really interesting bikes actually. So this is the updated SB165 there. Obviously 165 mil travel, a big hitting enduro bike with a 170 fork. The bike that's also been ridden at Red Bull Rampage. 63 and a half degree head angle, 76.9 seat tube angle. But over here is the downhill prototype. So we've seen Richie Rude trying his luck at Daniel Racing on one of these bikes, but this is actually Reed Boggs' bike from the Tasmanian Hardline. Obviously it's a high pivot bike, fully prototype, mixed wheel size. Uh, look at the size of that seat tube, it's so chunky. Really interesting looking bike, and it's actually still dirty from that ride in Tasmania. And this is their brand new ASR cross-country bike, first cross-country bike they've done in 10 years. As XC has got more gnarly, they've jumped back into the game. It's got a 150 mil of rear travel, 124. This is spec to that flight attendant stuff as well. Very special, 66 and a half degree head angle, 75.5 seat angle, obviously full 29er. This is the brand new Giant Trans X bike. Uh, it's a 140 mil, 150 mil travel trail bike. It's got the Giant Maestro suspension link that they're famous for, but adjustability is the name again with this new bike. We've actually got a three position flip chip on the rear from mid to low or high, but also up front you've got these flip chips for the headset, so you can set it as it is now in the middle for your reach. We could also go five mil to the back or five mil to the front. Also on this top spec edition as well, you have this one piece bar and stem that has loads of adjustability. Again, via shims underneath that top cap, you can change the length of the stem, but also the kind of rise on that bar. You've got some storage underneath the bottle cage there and also a tool mount underneath that top tube. You've got an asymmetric back end this bike, which is pretty cool looking, and actually a massive protector underneath that down tube as well. This bike is full 29er, or you can run it mixed wheel size, but that reach adjust also means that should you want to keep it exactly the same, if you then put your reach to the front, so put the other cups in, get that five mil plus, the reach will be exactly the same as it was as a full 29er, or it just gives you lots of different options if you want to move it around however you wish with whatever wheel size you want to run. We're at Garmin and they are showing their new Tax Neo N trainer. It's got this really cool motion plate to the bottom of it. So it moves around, super comfortable to pedal along until you get sweaty and horrible, but it's a really good feel. But also, super interesting, this either plugs into the mains like your normal smart trainer, or you can run it without plugging it in. It basically charges itself. As soon as you start pedaling this thing, it powers up. So you don't need the cable. Also, it uh, connects directly to the Wi-Fi if you want super quick reactions on things like Zwift or your smart app that you're using for your training. We're at POC, the Swedish kings of understated style and protection. They're showing off some of their pros helmets, some that have been crashed. It's also uh, Lachlan Morton's helmet that he wore during the Tour Divide and also used as a helmet. Very cool. And they're showing off some of their brand new super lightweight sunglasses. So you may have seen Jenny Rizved's last weekend, the first round of the World Cup Cross Country win in a set of sunglasses very similar to these ones. They're actually called the uh, POC Illicit. And these are the new Torque versions. So slightly different shape. Uh, that sort of sit higher on the cheekbone and they are more of a curved radius to them. They're actually road glasses, they are super lightweight. I think they are some of the lightest weight glasses on the market, but these ones are also super popular with cross country mountain bikers as well. It's not just shiny new bikes at Sea Otter, there's lots of parts and tools to look at as well. A Topeak, they're showing off some of those. They have their Ratchet Rocket series, personal favorite of mine, I love those. Also this Torque Rocket Mini DX, so that is a mini portable uh, torque wrench. Very nice, some very, very lightweight 
uh, multi tools here. You can even weigh them on there to see how much they weigh. And a really clever portable workstand just out front. So this is a Topeak tune-up station, really portable workstation for your bike. Hooks onto the rear uh, seat stay and chain stay so you can spin the wheels. Also got tool storage down here, plus a little compartment with cable grooves. If you want to charge your e-bike or charge things like axe batteries, that can all be done nice and neatly. Got to see a couple of brand new products here at Topic as well. This is called the Shuttle Cage Z. Complete uh, carbon fiber. You may have seen this on Nino Scherter's bike. Super lightweight, as you'd imagine. And this is made from 50% recycled carbon fiber. And then the not too distant future will be 100% recycled carbon fiber from wind turbine blades. So that's pretty exciting. Also a Torque Stick Pro in this case here. So a digital uh, torque wrench. A couple of different ways to use this as well. There's a couple of different modes. So either you can have it uh, sort of keep going up the torque so it will display it there and it will keep going or you can set it so it beeps and vibrates and actually then spins when you hit your preset torque in there. Comes with all the bits you'd expect in one nice box. Camelback has shown off a very cool and colourful range of their podium insulated stainless steel bottles, which would be very nice. Starting to warm up here at Sea Otter. So a nice icy cold drink of one of those would be very much appreciated. Also, if you are here, they're doing a bottle trade-in. So you can trade in your bottle for a slightly better one while stocks last. Physique shown off a large range of their shoes from the gravity sort of downhill stuff up there, flats and clips, all the way over to their road stuff. We're actually seeing a lot of uh, crossover here at Seattle. There's a lot of new gravel stuff. A lot of it is kind of XC and gravel, and that's what we're seeing here with their Vento Proxy shoe. It's obviously super lightweight shoe for clipless pedals. It's got a carbon sole, where it's got uh, more sort of pliable upper on it. Physique have said they've changed their kind of shape uh, and the size into their shoe. So actually they've got a wider toe box uh, than previous models. Got boa on it as well and you've also got the ability to run some studs up front if you're going to ride in super muddy conditions or even race a little bit of cyclocross over at the choroid stand so these guys produce uh this stuff that you'll see in uh various brand helmets but in the smith helmets that we run but they're actually developed this brand new concept as well so thinking about comfort first protection so this will go in knee pads and elbow pads it's what they call auxetic design so designed to move with your body things like your kneecap when you're pedaling actually goes with it and doesn't tug against it these guys are actually an ingredient company so they don't make their own pads but you may see this in other brands pads very soon Canyon have a matte black setup, so it's swelteringly hot. It's a new Spectral CF that we've seen before. I've not seen it in that color, though. very nice. And something that is coming soon, we'll say on fly. Don't know what that is? Or well, maybe I do. Coming into GMA very soon. But also, if you're into e-bikes, we're gonna have a, an e-bike tech video up on EMBN very soon. But that's it for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more tech.